Welcome back. Over the years, we've heard a lot about the Church of Scientology. It's high profile, bolstered by Hollywood A-listers. But what goes on behind the walls of this religion isn't always glamorous. The church is led by David Miscavige, a man who usually prefers to stay out of the public eye. But now his niece has shone a bright, unwelcome light upon the church and its behaviour. Jenna Miscavige Hill spent more than 20 years in the church with her uncle. She told her story to Liz Hayes. There's not an exact criteria for evil, but I would definitely say, you know, somebody who makes rules that thousands and thousands of people can't have children and runs a church where there's child labor, forced and coerced abortions, where people are separated from their family. Um, if that's not evil, then what is, you know? 29-year-old Jenna Miscavige Hill is talking about the Church of Scientology. Well, thank you very much. Run by her own uncle, David Miscavige. It's just a game of power and control. It, it strips away your individuality and your conscience and just makes you do whatever their bidding is. People are either bad or good. They're either for Scientology or against Scientology. Well, what's the difference between Scientology and a cult? Mm, I don't, I can't think of any. <laughs> Scientology established its first church here in Los Angeles in 1954. It's always attracted controversy, not the least because its creator, the late L. Ron Hubbard, was a science fiction writer with, let's say, some interesting views. But over the years, the church has been accused of, at best, bizarre behaviour and, at worst, criminal conduct. Now, what Jenna Miscavige Hill, the church leader's niece, has to say, casts yet another very dark shadow over the church. For most of her life, Scientology was all Jenna Miscavige Hill had ever known. From childhood, she lived in the inner sanctum of the church. Her parents and grandparents were Scientologists, and it was where she met her husband, Dallas. Church is first. Church right, is before first. family, before friends, especially before yourself. And that became clear, says Jenna, from early childhood. Her parents were part of the clergy, or Sea Org, as they're called. And according to Jenna, spent long periods away from their children. From when I was four, I started only seeing them uh, once a week. Um, and then from when I was 12 until I was 18, I saw my mom twice um, and, you know, and my dad four times. And the majority of those times were for less than an hour. Well, of course, uh, from an outsider's perspective, I, I'd be saying, well, why weren't your parents trying to contact you? It's hard, like it's this whole mind control business to see that that was a bad situation. They would have to see their whole world crumbling down. When she was six, Jenna was sent here, to the ranch, a Scientology boarding school just outside of Los Angeles. It was run like a military type school. Everything we did was very regimented. We did manual labor for 35 hours a week. And it was anything from like digging ditches for irrigation to hauling wheelbarrows full of gravel to make cactus gardens to hauling rocks to make rock walls um, to weeding for fire breakers, things like that. And it was here that Jenna says that she signed away her heart and soul. At just seven years of age, she signed a contract committing her to a billion years with the church. Did you know what you were signing? I mean, I knew that it was a billion years, but it was more... And I knew that, that that's what my parents did, but it was more that I didn't know that I had any other option, you know? Well, a seven-year-old signing a, a billion-year yeah. contract sounds outrageous. Right, yeah. But it did bind me emotionally and uh, mentally, and, you know, I wanted to be loyal and keep that contract. I never thought that I ever wouldn't. Dallas, did you sign a billion-year contract? Yeah, when I was 18 and joined the Sea Org, I signed. And you didn't hesitate? Um... 
No, at first it, I had someone yelling at my face and telling me I was evil for not signing it because I wanted to be an actor and to go off and do normal stuff. So, yeah, it took uh, about a few months of constantly interrogating me and pressuring me and telling me that's the greatest thing in the world. 75 million years ago, the galaxy was ruled by a tyrant named Zeno. One day, Zeno rounded up various wrongdoers and imprisoned them in volcanoes on Earth, which was then called Tidiak. This is the world according to church founder L. Ron Hubbard. Hydrogen bombs were dropped on them. Then their spirits, called Thetans, were trapped in humans. And that is the cause of all our sufferings. Only through Scientology can our Thetans be cleared. Do you ever think that you might be quite mad? Oh, yes. The one man in the world who never believes he's mad is a madman. Hubbard died in 1986, but his teachings, based seemingly on a mix of science fiction and psychoanalysis, continues today. We had pictures of him in every room, pretty much. You know, we, we had to clap to his picture at the end of every day, several times a day, even. Since its inception, Scientology has come under intense scrutiny, but never more so than now, after a number of former church members have made serious allegations of abuse and mistreatment. You're not encouraged to have children, are you? Or are well, you banned from having children? Well, regular Scientologists are allowed to have children, but members of the Sea Org are not allowed to have children. And if you fell pregnant, what would happen? Many people are coerced into having abortions, guilted into it, told that, well, you're not following your billion, your contract, you're betraying us. Because that's a serious allegation to make, that you're encouraged or, or, or made to think that an abortion is an appropriate action. It is serious, but it's completely true. It's like many people, many friends of mine, um, I've even seen it happen in some cases. Um, so... Yes, it's very serious, but it's completely, it's completely the truth. For those who broke any of the church rules, punishment could take many forms. Dallas claims it meant being locked in the basement of this building. We had premarital sex and we got in trouble and I was in the basement for two weeks and told that if I didn't cooperate, I'd never see Jen again and I'd never see my parents again. The church has categorically denied Dallas's allegations. Scientology owes much of its high profile to Hollywood, the number of its stars who have embraced the church, including Tom Cruise. I do what I can, and I do it the way I do everything. <laughs> There's nothing part of the way for me. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Cruz and David Miscavige, the church leader, are said to be close friends. But according to Dallas, who worked at the Scientology Celebrity Center, there had, at one time, been some concerns. Uh, Tom Cruise is, for many, the, uh, the biggest name in the right. church. Mm -hmm. um, when you were there, Dallas, so you were aware that Nicole Kidman had some influence on how he was being viewed. Well, yeah, when I was at the celebrity church, he wasn't around, he wasn't on services. And I was told from them that it was because Nicole Kidman was an influence on him. And not a good one. And not a good one. Is it possible for Tom Cruise to have a, a partner and not, um, who's not a participant of the church and stay in the church? As a Scientologist, you believe that Scientology is going to save that person. So if you really love someone, there's almost no chance that you wouldn't do everything you could to make them into a Scientologist. Having been born and bred a Scientologist and as the niece of David Miscavige, any thoughts of leaving were always going to be a challenge for Jenna. But the idea took seed when the church sent Jenna and Dallas to work in Australia. 
That was a turning point, you say, for both of you. Yeah. Yes. Why? Because I had never been around non-Scientologists in my life before. So it was an interesting chance to see that, you know, no, not everyone is a Scientologist. Not everyone is in love with Scientology. And they were actually kind of normal and pretty cool. And all of a sudden you could see everything for what it was, how controlled it was. The decision to leave the church caused Dallas and Jenna enormous heartache. They claim they were pressured to stay with threats they would lose all contact with their families. Jenna says she considered suicide. You did stand on a ledge and tell them you would jump. Mm -hmm. That's a fairly extreme position to take. That was the only option I had. I mean, they had taken everything else away from me. They'd taken away my family. They'd moved me away from my friends so many times. Now they were taking Dallas away, you know, what else could I do? All I knew is that the church feared bad publicity. It seems to me it still hurts you to this day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Tough. Sorry. It's okay. Clearly, it was yeah. a terrible time. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, it, there's... Who knows what would have happened? That's the scary thing is they have so much control and so much mind control over you that you just are at their whim. Past Hill Canyon School was a big property. It was beautiful. It was a nice place for kids to grow up. The church has denied all of Jenna's allegations, describing them as tabloid tales which should be taken with a grain of salt and it has set up a website to refute her claims about the ranch. I love the experience. It was very heartwarming. I mean, this is amazing. Like, who gets an experience of working on a farm these days? Well, of course, the church has declared that you're a liar. Mm-hmm. Are you a liar? No, everything I'm saying is completely true. The church is the liars, you know? I mean, there's so many stories like mine out there that corroborate each other and that they just can't keep a handle on it anymore. You are accused of exploiting your uncle's name. Mm -hmm. You're cashing in on being a miscavige. Right. I mean, it's just like what I'm saying is the truth. If by nature of me having his name brings more attention to it, then awesome, because it should. Jenna and Dallas now live in Southern California, and Jenna has written a book about her time in the church. I feel like now, finally, I feel like I know myself, you know, I have my own family, I know what I want. They're parents to children Archie and Winnie, and are now living the life they say they almost lost. We're all different, we all have something to give, and so to me, the fact that Scientology takes away the chance for people to live their lives and be who they are, to me, that's what makes it dangerous. It's like, uh, like a crime against humanity, against life itself. And we'd like to hear your thoughts on the Church of Scientology. You can join the conversation by going to the Interact Live page on the 60 Minutes iPad app. The church declined our request for an interview, but you can read their full statement on our website.